Okay, in lesson four, we're doing another example in heat transfer, and this time we're uh, practicing heat transfer through a wall. So we have we're gonna have conduction and convection uh, on two sides of the wall. Let's assume we have a wall. If I can draw, oh. So let's try to draw a wall. Assuming this is a rectangle, I'm going to apply a heat or, or a temperature of, uh, let's say, 60 to the interior, give a K, which is a coefficient const, uh, conduction co coefficient of 100 again to the wall. And on this other side of the wall, I'm going to say that there is convection with a coefficient of 20 and temperature of let's say 30 and um, I have to mention that this temperature T infinity is not the temperature of this side of the wall perhaps this is the temperature of the air or um, any other fluid that is flowing around this area through which con convection heat transfer takes place through the wall so if the thickness of the wall we assume is 1 and let's give a length of uh, maybe 20 to the total length of the wall. Uh, or I'm gonna have a 1D conduction through, through the wall in X direction, if my X direction in this orientation. And then from this side of the wall, there's gonna be convection heat transfer to the air or, or the other, uh, any other fluid which is in the environment outside this wall. So basically, through the um, conservation of energy, in this wall, which I'm going to call wall 2, at wall 2, conduction heat transfer is supposed to be equal to convection heat, heat uh, transfer. K um, K times delta T over delta X, which I guess you know that there is a minus over there, is equal to minus H delta T. And this delta T is not the same as this delta T, so I'm going to put TW here. The minus signs are going to cancel out, so 100 times delta X is going to be 1 in here, so I'm going to put 1. 60 minus T2 is going to be equal to 20 times T2 minus 30. And from solving this equation, we can find uh, T2, which is the temperature of the wall in this side. So 6,000 minus uh, 100 T2 is equal to 20 T2 minus 60 or 600. So moving them uh, to the other side, 6600 is going to be equal to 120 T2. So T2 is going to be equal to 6600 over 112 or 6600 6, over 120. From solving this equation, we can find uh, T2, which is probably going to be 55. And then if we have T2 from this equation, from Q, Q equals uh, 100 times 60 minus 55 over 1 is equal to 100 times 5 is going to give me a heat transfer of 500 and also Q equals 20 times 55 minus 30 is going to give me 20 times 25 which is again equal to um, 500. In this example uh, the other technique of ANSYS I'm going to teach is defining a path and mapping uh, temperature 
to the path and uh, plot temperature versus uh, distance or length in the wall which because I'm doing a 1D heat transfer I'm expecting to have a linear if this is my X and this is temperature from 60 to probably 55 in here I'm expecting to have a linear um, difference in temperature or gradient in temperature from x0 which is here to x1 which is going to be here so with this let's go to ANSYS and do the demonstration okay we're in ANSYS right now and I'm gonna select uh, preferences and check thermal click OK come to preprocessor and again the first step is to define my elements add an element and from thermal I'm gonna pick solid and this time again I'm gonna pick uh, plane 77 which has eight nodes uh, in uh, square shaped uh, elements close this and uh, this uh, element does not require any real constant so I can skip that one and come to material properties material models click thermal conductivity iso isotropic and give a conductivity of 100 over there click OK then I can come to modeling and I want to create an uh, area of a rectangle shape so I come to areas rectangle by dimensions I'm gonna give 0 and 1 to X or let's make it from minus 0 0.05 minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 which gives me the same length and from minus 10 to 10 this uh, this will give me a rectangle of 1 units in X direction and 20 units in Y direction but the center of this rectangle will set at the point zero zero. Click OK, and as you see, my or the origin of the coordinate system that I'm using for this analysis is exactly at the center of the rectangle. I can go to meshing, and again I'm going to use a mesh tool and um, smart size, let's say four. Click mesh select my area and click OK and my uh, sample or my model is being meshed now I can apply the loads come to here make sure that I'm doing a city state analysis and close this window OK define loads apply I'm gonna apply thermal loads so the first thing I'm gonna apply is a temperature on this line which we said we we're expecting that to be 60 okay and I'm gonna apply convection on this line which it takes from me the coefficient which I said I want it to be 20 and the temperature the bulk temperature which is the temperature of the air or any other uh, fluid um, on the other side of the wall I'm gonna give it 30 click OK and just to make sure that there is no heat, fl heat flux uh, on the top and bottom of this rectangle I'm gonna come here on lines and select the two lines on the top and the bottom of this rectangle and give a zero value for that click OK and my model is ready to be solved so I come to solution solve current LS yes solution is done so for this model let's see how is temperature changing Plot results, control plots, no low solution, temperature. So the minimum is 55 on the wall and the maximum is 60. So the temperature is changing from 60 to 55 as we had calculated uh, before. And um, thermal gradient or thermal flux in x direction is 500. Again, the same thing that we found out in the uh, analysis by hand. 
So basically everything is the same or similar to what we had done in the previous uh, three lessons. And if I come here and I want to see the vector plot of heat flux, everything is in the x direction, which is uh, what we were expecting. But let's have a... Uh, uh, or right now, I want to define a path. So I come to under general post process, I come to path operations, define a path. I can define a path by nodes or by work, by on working plane or by location, because uh, here I, def I uh, defined my uh, rectangle to change from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 in x direction and minus 10 to plus 10 in y direction. I know that this middle is at x equals minus 5 to minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 and y equals zero. So I can pick by location, define a path name. I'm going to say path 01. Number of points I want to define for this path is 2, the beginning and the end. So that's it. Number of data sets, let's change it to um, 40. And number of divisions, let's divide that to uh, 80 and click OK. This uh, number of divisions makes the uh, reading of data pretty more are more precise than lower numbers for the number of divisions so point one so uh, the in this uh, window NPT path point number is the number of point that you're uh, defining the locations for if you remember I said I was gonna define two points the beginning and the end for this path so not Point number one is going to be the beginning. I'm going to say from x of 0 0.05 or 0 minus uh, 0 0.5 and y of 0. Okay. To the point number two. And remember that you have to change this number manually. Otherwise, ANSYS will overwrite your data. So point two is located at plus 0.5 and y equals 0. I can now cancel this window. So this path at the very center of the rectangle is defined for me. Now what I have to do is to come and map onto path. On the map onto path, I want to map the temperatures and I'm going to give it a name temp1 just to make it different from um, temp which is written in here and click OK. You can map onto the path as many items as you want or as many results as you want but here we're only uh, having temperature and if I go to flux and gradient differently this is not going to help me a lot and I'm not very interested in those things so I'm just going to stick with temperature. In future examples I can um, go on and map more results in my path and plot them now here, after defining the path in the define path command and mapping temperature on my, onto my path, I can come to plot path on graph and find the uh, variable that I defined earlier and click OK. And as you see, from distance of 0 to 1, which is at the interior and the outside of the wall, the temperature is changing linearly from 60 to 1. We can also extract this uh, data into a text file. So if we come to list results, path items, path one, okay, and ch and select temperature one that I selected earlier. I can save this file now and uh, plot this in Excel or any other software that can read this. Uh, uh, file for me. So there's a data point. S represents the distance from um, x equals 0, which at 0 it's, it represents the interior side of the wall, and when it goes to 1, it represents the wall, the exterior of the wall. And the number of divisions that I made, uh, which was 80, means that this distance is divided by, I mean, every 
increment is 1, eight, 1 over 80. And the temperature for each of them is red and represented in here. And uh, I think this concludes uh, lesson four. A very basic heat transfer with conduction and convection, 1D conduction and free convection of the wall. We found the temperature which was which was unknown to us on the exterior side of the wall, and we also found the heat transfer uh, or heat flux which was going through the wall and also the convection. Um, heat uh, or heat conduction or convection and uh, we also defined a path and mapped the temperature on the path and then plotted that temperature the only thing that you can probably do is um, go on geometry and click that one As you see it's kind of like a representation on how on how temperature is changing but it's not as clear as on graph that we did earlier so with this, I'm going to conclude um, lesson four.